the truth is out there. It is one of the world's greatest mysteries, Scotland's legendary Loch Ness Monster. So does the lake creature actually exist? Well, if you ask one man, he'll tell you it is in fact no myth. Every day it's flaunted in front of your face. Hundreds of people in the valley say they are hearing voices in their heads. You just choose to ignore it. Belief can be a powerful force. No one knows that better than the people who are sure they've seen Bigfoot. Real accounts. He says he knows who's playing mind games. Rogue government officials that are uh, sponsoring this. Um, also corrupt business officials and um, private citizens. From real people. Hundreds of people turned out tonight for the unveiling of a very controversial statue. Yeah, it really is. The Satanic Temple of Detroit revealed the one-ton bronze statue. It's time for you to take a swim. I'm just excited to see my Lord and Savior Baphomet represented in such glorious Italian stone. I do hope his eyes gaze upon me and that my allegiance is recognized. In the dark waters. The Dark Waters channel is for entertainment purposes only. Although information in these stories can be traced back to relevant and true sources, Dark Waters strongly discourages its viewers, listeners, and subscribers from visiting the site of incidents and encounters discussed or revealed on the show. In other words, we will not be held responsible if you are attacked by a dogman, molested by a Bigfoot, bitten by vampires, chased by chupacabras, abducted by aliens, accosted by the men in black, investigated or arrested by the local law enforcement, CIA, FBI, NSA, EPA, BLM, or another alphabet group, whether on U.S. soil or abroad. Thank you for tuning in, and enjoy the show. A dogman encounter happened early one morning. You see... As a trucker, I spend very long hours on the road. And oftentimes, I tend to push myself a little bit further than I need to when driving. This particular day, I've been driving and started to feel sleepy. So I stopped at Love's truck stop, just off Highway 10 and 90. I got the truck backed in and situated, then climbed to the back seat and went to sleep. When I woke up, it was about 6.45 a.m. So I headed into Love's, grabbed the shower and some breakfast, coffee, and got back on the road. I was headed to Sierra Vista. As I got on the roadway, the sun was just rising. One of the best things about being a truck driver is the views. Since I was a little kid, I've absolutely loved taking long road trips. And I was always fascinated about the terrain and how it changes across the U.S. I turned taking 90 South, heading towards Sierra Vista, traveling about 65 miles an hour. And just as I'm passing Cavern State Park, I see something leaping across the roadway on my left-hand side. As I got closer to it, this thing was standing in the medium, looking at my truck. Then it takes one leap and clears the entire roadway. Now this is a two lane highway, 15 feet per lane at least, and about eight feet on each side as a buffer. So this thing jumped damn near 40 to 50 feet. And when I say leaped, you should have seen the trajectory of this thing. It jumped up and had I been closer, it would have easily cleared the hood of my rig. And what it looked like, it looked like a giant black wolf is all I can tell you. Everything happened so fast, and I know this sounds crazy, but while it was in the air, I could have sworn that this thing took a quick glance at me. It freaked me completely the fuck out. I've heard people on these talk shows saying they go out looking for these creatures. Well, I'll tell you what. What I saw, no one should be looking for. The muscle mass on this thing was ridiculous. Its arms and shoulders, and I guess you would call it its thighs, were massive. And the speed, the speed at which it moved, like nothing I've ever seen. I did tap on my brakes and look through my side mirror once I passed that spot. And this thing was just walking off the roadway. It seemed like my presence didn't phase it at all. Nor did the presence of my truck. I'm not sure what it was or where it comes from. But I don't ever want to encounter that thing again. In my early 20s, I worked for a company that had a contract with the U.S. government at the border. And no, I was not a Border Patrol agent. I worked as part of a maintenance program. My job was to maintain the border fences and manage crews of workers. Now, this job was intense. Not only did you have to contend with the weather, but there was a constant flow of illegal aliens and contraband across the border. The illegals posed a minor threat. Most of the times, they would hide from you or run away. 
But the cartel and drug smugglers were a whole nother story. They would kill you at any moment. Although the job was dangerous, our company didn't permit us to carry firearms. However, my crew and I always carried a weapon because we figured our lives were more important than any job. I remember going through the safety training class and how the instructor would joke saying that we should stay in pairs of twos and threes. He would say, four eyes are always better than two. While in class, you know, a few rumors began to circulate about reasons why this contract had such high turnover. There were some guys that got killed by the cartel, and other guys started seeing strange things in the sky at night. I pretty much heard it all over coffee and smoke breaks. Outside of the cartel business, I believed everything else was bullshit. But there was one exception. Nowadays, you call it dog man. They didn't call it dog man around the office, though. They called it DX-587. So when people initially talked about it, I figured it was some kind of experimental weapon or a freaking robot that they used to patrol the border. We would have tailgate meetings in the morning. And our supervisor would say stuff like, There are DX-587s working in Zone 6. I want you guys to stay clear of that area and work Zone 4. They talked about it real casually, so I figured, hey, don't worry about it. Besides, most of the guys I worked with had never seen it. That was until one afternoon, two of my crew members and I were out in Zone 6 repairing a fence. Some illegals had taken a blowtorch to the fence, cutting through the three feet metal rods and creating a hole that you could simply drive a truck through. Until that day, I'd never seen DX-587. Hell, to be honest with you, by that time, I figured it all was some bullshit. I figured the cartel had paid our supervisors to come up with this story about DX-587 just to keep us out of the areas where they'd be trafficking the drugs through. I never actually imagined that DX-587 actually existed, and it was a real threat. Back to what I was saying. We're in Zone 6, and I'm working a spider crane trying to replace the metal that had been damaged. Sandy and Brent, the other two guys with me, are trying to hold on to this rod and guide it into its foundation. That's when we see a group of people running towards us. It had to be 30 people, most of them men. They were running north towards the U.S. border. Now our viewpoint was elevated, so we had a damn good view of this. Sandy, one of the guys who had been working in this area the longest, was one of those slow talkers. And he said, them people getting chased by something. I'm not sure what it is, but they running for their lives. It's time we get moving. The crowd was still a good distance away, and we decided we should start loading the truck. But that's when we started hearing screams and growling sounds. We all just stood there frozen. And it started to sink into us that this was DX-587 at work. This creature actually fucking existed. Through my binoculars, I could see what looked like two huge dogs chasing these people. At first, I just figured they were being chased by a pack of wild dogs. Very big dogs, but yet just wild dogs. That was until I saw one of the dogs stand up on his two hind legs. For a second, I thought I was tripping. So I threw the binoculars to Sandy, telling him to take a look and not tell him exactly what I saw. And at first, he thought it was funny. He said, look at them dogs having a field day with them. Then he went silent and said, what the hell? That ain't no dogs. That's when he tossed me the binoculars and started tightening the straps on the truck. And we left. When we returned to the yard, it was dark. But our manager was still there in the office. This is where the strange part really starts to happen. He apologizes to us and said, you guys should not been in zone six today. He went on to explain that he made a mistake in his morning briefing. He then said, what you saw today was DX-587 that we've been trying to avoid. I'm happy you guys are safe, but I'm going to have to let you go. Now, at this point in time, I'm completely pissed off. I asked him, first of all, how did you know what we saw today? Because none of us told him what we saw. Secondly, how are you going to let me go because I saw something? I was just doing my job. That went absolutely nowhere. And yes, we were fired because of what we saw. I was given a $13,000 severance check the very next day. And when I had finally calmed down, I approached my supervisor like a man and said, Hey, what the fuck is all this about? And that's when he tied it all in this neat knot. He simply said we would never get any work done if people really knew what was out there. In other words, we would pay it off to be silent and go away. So they can keep their government contract. And have a steady floor of workers. Ain't that a bitch.